So for this video today, we are going to be entering chapter 7, which is about transport in plants. One major complaint that students face with transport in plants is the variety of different types of tissues that a dicotyledon plant may have. Like, you know, students may say, uh, there are parenchyma tissues, sclerenchyma, xylem, phloem. There is also the epidermis and endodermis. So it makes the plants seem extremely complicated when in reality it actually is not. Before we go into the detail of the different types of tissues in the plants, I want to do a little bit of revision. You see, why do plants, which are multicellular organisms, need transport systems. What I'm doing is I'm just drawing out a stack of cells, as you can see here. And just imagine this grids, each tiny square representing a plant cell. So you have the soil and you have minerals inside the soil, and you want the minerals to go all the way up to the cell at the top. What will actually happen is it's going to be difficult for the minerals to go all the way to the top. The reason is because the diffusion distance is too large. And in chapter 3, it was mentioned that the larger the distance of diffusion, the rate of diffusion or the speed of diffusion significantly decreases. So multicellular organisms have a very low total surface area to volume ratio. Therefore, diffusion is not sufficient to allow minerals or water or whatever substance to move in the plant. So what the plants will do then is they will actually create this kind of tubes within themselves. And these tubes are referred to as the transport system. Because what happens is the minerals move into these tubes and they are carried upwards by water. And in this case, it minimizes the diffusion distance. So as you can see in yellow is the diffusion distance quiet for the minerals to go all the way to the top without a transport system. But with the transport system, the diffusion distance is highlighted in green. What do you notice? The transport system actually minimizes the diffusion distance and makes it easier for it to happen. So that's what we have to know about why the transport system is important. Now comes the more important thing. What are the different types of plant tissues that are present in a dicotyledon plant? You see, in dicotyledon plants, the different types of tissues can be separated or can be grouped into three. The first type of plant tissue is referred to as the epidermis, also known as the epidermal tissues. Epidermis or epidermal tissues are just like the skin. Okay, so it's the outermost tissue of the plant. It is usually a one cell thick layer and most of the time it has a protective function like a skin basically to prevent pathogens from easily entering and to also protect the internal structure of the plant. The second type of tissue that plants may have is something known as vascular tissues and vascular tissue, what the word vascular means is tubes. So vascular tissues are usually made out of xylem and phloem, which I will explain in later videos. For now, you just have to know that anytime you see the word xylem or phloem, imagine tubes. And they are involved in the transport of substances, which we will elaborate later. Now, the third type of tissue is a bit more interesting. They are referred to as something known as ground tissues. Immediately, students will go, oh, ground tissue. So it means that any cells or tissues that are underneath the ground or in the soil? Not necessarily. You see, ground tissues are basically any tissues in the plants that are not the epidermis or vascular tissues. What do I mean by that? Before we go into ground tissues in detail, let's see where these tissues are found in the plant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw out a dicotyledon plant so you can see me drawing out the root, the stem, and also the leaf. Now, and the root, you can know that it has the root hair, so that's what it is. Those red color lines is what happens if I were to cut the plant in a transverse or cross section. 
and when I cut them out, these are the kinds of sections that I will get, which I'm highlighting in yellow. The parts where I'm highlighting in yellow are respectively the cross section or transverse section of the leaf, stem, and roots. So, what we are going to do is we are going to examine all the cross section underneath the microscope so that we know where are the epidermis, vascular tissues, and the ground tissues located in each organ of the plant. So, if I were to draw out the cross section, each of the cross section in detail, you will see me drawing out the cross section of the leaf, the cross section of the roots, and also the cross section of the stem, as we can see under the microscope. These are referred to as something called plan diagrams. Plan diagrams do not actually look at individual cells. We are just looking at the layers of tissues. Okay, so but I will not delve into the details of plan diagram. But if a question were to ask you to draw out a plan diagram, this is what you just have to draw out and it will be sufficient. So, when we bring it back to this part of the notes, remember we wanted to see where the epidermal tissues, vascular tissues, and ground tissues are located. So for the epidermis, I will be highlighting it in a slightly pink color. In the leaf, the epidermis is located over there. The stem has the epidermis located there, and the roots have the epidermis located there. Remember, I said to you that the epidermis is the outermost tissue of the plant, so they act as the protective layer. Vascular tissues I will highlight in red, and the vascular tissues are actually made out of the xylem and phloem. In this video, I will not go into the detail as to where the xylem and phloem are located. I'm just going to highlight them both together. So in my diagram here, you can see that wherever the red highlights are located, the xylem and phloem are found there as well. Now, any parts of the plant that were not highlighted are not the epidermis and not the vascular tissues. Therefore, they are referred to as the ground tissues. So the ground tissues, I'm going to be highlighting it in a, I guess you can say that's a beige color or a like brown. Is that brown? Yeah, that's brown. So those brown colors where I'm highlighting are the ground tissues. So the ground tissues are just found in the leaf, stem, and roots. And those are the parts where I'm highlighting in brown or beige or whatever. That is where the ground tissues are located. So these are the distribution of the three different types of tissues in the plant. The epidermis in pink, the vascular tissues in red, and the ground tissues in beige. So what are the functions of the ground tissues? That's quite a common question that students always ask. So a ground tissue is not just a single type of tissue. There are many subtypes of ground tissues, which is what makes it a little bit confusing. So without wasting time, the first type of ground tissue that you have to know are parenchyma tissues. When you see the word parenchyma, look at the first alphabet in parenchyma, P, which I've highlighted. P in this case stands for packing. That's how I remember it. Now, imagine for a second if you had like a box which was marked fragile and you had an extremely fragile item inside the box. You see, if the item is just like that and you're shipping the item, the problem is the fragile item will move easily inside the box and it might break. Okay, for example, it's like something like a bottle of wine or a very expensive vase. So to prevent the item inside the box from moving around as it is being shipped over the world, what we do is we will fill up the box with packing tissues. The packing tissues or packing foam will keep the precious item in one place and prevent it from moving, even if the box is being moved. That is what the parenchyma tissue is like. Okay, The parenchyma tissue is making sure that structures within the plant cannot move at all. Another way to just describe it is you can see six glass bottles and the six glass bottles cannot easily move inside the box because of that white packing foam or packing styrofoam that is keeping things in place. 
so too is the parenchyma tissues in plants. They act as packing tissues to support the roots, stem, and leaf. So as you can see here, I'm just showing you the cross-section of the leaf, stem, and roots. And notice that in the leaf, I'm drawing out the small little green um, rectangles and circles that you can see over there. Right, And in the stem, I'm also just drawing out those tiny little circles. And in the roots, I'm also drawing out those tiny green circles. I'm not going to cover the entire span of the diagram because, look, we don't have time. But just imagine that it has covered the entire diagram, okay? So those tiny little green things that I've put there are actually the parenchyma tissues. They are found there, by the way. And in the leaf... The parenchyma tissues are referred to as the palisade mesophyll cells and the spongy mesophyll cells. You may remember this from photosynthesis, right? And in the stem, the parenchyma which is nearer to the edge of the stem is referred to as the stem cortex. And the parenchyma cells which I've drawn out in purple uh, towards the center of the stem is referred to as the pith, okay? They are just parenchyma. The names are different due to their location. That's just it. And in the roots, they are referred to as root cortex. So even though they all have different names, they all are just referred to as parenchyma tissues. right? And their main functions are just to act as packing tissues to support the stem, roots, and leaf. The question here is, how do they exactly support the stem, roots, or leaf? One way they can actually support it is by turgor pressure. Turgor pressure is what happens when water goes into the cell and the internal pressure of the cell increases and it pushes against the cell wall. So the plant cell doesn't actually increase so much in size, but the pressure is so much that the cell becomes turgid and it's strong and it keeps things in place. That's a good thing right there. But another extra thing that I, I would like you to know is that the palisade mesophyll cells and the spongy mesophyll cells, which are parenchyma tissues in the leaf, not only do they support the leaf, they also contain chloroplasts. The reason why they have chloroplasts is, well, obviously, to carry out photosynthesis. So that's what we have to know about the parenchyma tissues. The next type of ground tissue we have to know is sclerenchyma. The first alphabet of sclerenchyma is S, highlighted in yellow. S stands for support. That is how you remember it. Sclerenchyma tissues, all you just have to know about it very clearly, dead tissues and they are lignified. Lignified, I will explain them later in a future video when we talk about xylem in detail. It's surrounded by lignin, which is a hard, rigid, waterproof substance. And sclerenchyma, all you have to know about the location of sclerenchyma is its location in the stem. In the stem, it's grouped together with the vascular bundle, where the xylem and phloem are nearby. Uh, but the sclerenchyma are the outermost part of the vascular bundle. Sclerenchyma has this weird elongated structure where it's filled with empty space, but it has a tapered end where the ends close up and it has a lignified wall. That's all we have to know for it, and the function of the sclerenchyma is merely for support. It does not do anything else. And moving on to the third type of ground tissue that we have to know is something known as colenchyma. First alphabet of colenchyma is C, which stands for cell wall. You see, normal parenchyma tissues have this normal cell wall structure, as I'm showing you over there, a simplified diagram of a plant cell. But look at the colenchyma cells. The colenchyma cells have this weird kind of swelling of the cell wall where there is an extra buildup of cellulose in the cell wall, making the cell wall much thicker. So where exactly can you find the colenchyma in the plant cells? For colenchyma, you only have to know that they are found inside the leaf. Where exactly in the leaf? Where the veins are located. So you see that diagram of the leaf there, wherever I'm circling, that part is quite hard and rigid and it's quite tough. The reason it's quite tough over there is because of the colenchyma cells, which have an extra thick layer of cell wall, which causes that area to have a slight thickening. That's all we have to know about colenchyma. 
And the last type of ground tissue that we actually have to cover is endodermis. Now, in this case, E does not stand for anything that I can think of. So you might have to find your own way to remember this. But we will be talking about endodermis uh, in detail in future chapters. For now, all you just have to know is there is another type of ground tissue called endodermis. And they are mainly found in the roots. The endodermis is the part where I'm highlighting right now. So they are mainly found in the root and they are a single layer. The function of the endodermis is to be explained later. I do not want to delve into the detail of this yet because let's just introduce all the characters first. After we introduce the characters, then we'll talk about their functions in detail. But for now, all we have to know about the endodermis is as such where they are a single layer and each of those boxes represent the endodermal cell. And I'm going to draw out the endodermal cells. You can see the cytoplasm, the vacuole and such. And the cell wall, I'm going to color in orange. Now, so those two endodermal cells, interestingly, look at the cell wall. In the cell wall, I'm drawing out that black color line. That black color line on the cell wall is referred to as something known as the Casparian strip. The Casparian strip, for now, all you just have to know is a waxy layer of a substance known as suberin. And the main function of the suberin is to prevent water from passing through because it's waxy, but I am going to explain all that in a later video. For now, all we just have to know is the endodermis is a type of ground tissue found in the root. It's a single layer and the cell wall of the endodermis has something referred to as the Casparian strip where it is made out of a waxy layer of suberin. That's basically it. So if we were to look at an actual diagram of a plant cell, this is the cross-section of the stem that you can see under the microscope. We have the vascular bundles. There is the phloem and xylem. Yep. And they are referred to as vascular tissues together. And just outer, the outer part that I'm highlighting in yellow, that is the epidermis. I'm not going to go all the way through the circumference. The next thing that we also have to draw out, highlight out, is the purple color highlight, pink. Purple. That is the sclerenchyma, which is a type of ground tissue made out of dead cells, and it's only for support. Whatever parts which are not the epidermis or the vascular bundle, they are the parenchyma, which I'm highlighting in green. So that is the stem cortex made out of the parenchyma tissue, which is a type of ground tissue, by the way. All right. So that is how we just have to look at this diagram. So by looking at the stem over here, we have identified the three different types of tissue. We know the epidermis, we know the vascular tissue, and we know the ground tissues. And for the stem, the ground tissues are only made out of the sclerenchyma and the cortex. And in the middle of the cortex, which I'm circling right now, is the pith, which is also a type of parenchyma tissue as well.